John and Rick, let me ask you. Here you've got Rick Pitino, who had this guy in college. Now he has him in the NBA. How easy does that make that, or does it make it at all tough? I, I think it makes it very difficult, but it's a testimony to the fact that Rick knows that he can play. I love Ron Mercer. I thought he was one of the most colorful kids that I saw coming out of high school, coming into college. I think he's going to be a tremendous pro, and again, you've got a guy that can play the game the way Rick wants it to be played. He's not just athletic, he's got the energy to play the game the way it should be played. Question of where you play him, whether it's the two or the three? I think either one. I, I, I'd demur to Hubie on that in that regard. I know this. He made roadkill out of our defense. He's <laughs> superb at coming off the screens, moves well to get his own shot, runs the floor. I mean, I, I really like him. I, I think he has a little bit of a problem, Hubie, getting his own shot off the dribble low. No, I agree with that. And uh, you, you know that he can also post up for you if you play him at a two-guard position. What Rick is doing here, you could have either taken a Timmy Thomas, Tracy McGrady, or Ron Mercer. You eliminated the unknown because you know this guy. You've had him. He gets you a 20 in the big game that wins the NCAA championship. So you know that there are very little things of surprise here. So Rick is going to have to put in a work ethic of the type of defense that he wants. And that's something which was lacking last year in Boston. And when you talk about a team that gave up defensively over 100 points a game and then also led the league in the worst uh, defense with shooting percentage of over 50 percent. They were last. So he's trying to get his type of people. And Ron Mercer standing by now before he heads to Boston with Greg Slater. All right. We talked to you a couple weeks ago in Chicago. You said you wanted to play for Coach Patino in Boston. But everybody said for the past couple of weeks he wasn't going to take you. When did you find out? What were your conversations with Coach? I, mean, I was just hoping that he would take me. I never knew what was going to happen. Uh, I figured that he, he wouldn't really pass me up. So I think all the talk kind of scared everybody off, and I ended up where I really wanted to be anyway. As a freshman, just eight points on a national championship team as a sophomore, the SEC Player of the Year. What sacrifices did you have to make for the good of the team? I mean, we had to put all the egos aside. You know, I just had to go in, play my role whenever my time came. Just go in and do what I had to do when my time came. Does this make it easy for you to make the adjustment to the NBA, knowing that you already have played for that coach? I think so. I think it makes it a lot easier. I still have a lot of work to do, but then again, coach is familiar with me, and I'm kind of familiar with the system, so that helps me out a lot. Two position or three? Wherever he wants to put me at. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Good luck. Let's go back there, Nate.